Now then, who has the next report? Remember, I must be satisfied that all five missions have been successfully concluded, or else the catalogue of your crimes will be placed in the hands of Inspector Cadbury of the Yard. You are, you blackmailing cur. Steady. He may have a knife at our throat, but we must never forget that the mausoleum is a club of gentlemen. I move to beg your pardon, sir, but since we're all under the threat of the noose, would it not be gentlemanly of you to explain why five of our finest murderers have been forced to rekindle their art? And why on these five particular victims? Victims? How droll. I merely sent you to achieve what the law could not. Justice. And what better way to serve justice than to set murderer against murderer? Explain okay. yourself, sir. Consider the case of a desperate villain, a party chief perhaps, who for 20 years has terrorized the Caribbean seas with pillage, murder, and other crimes. At last, he's brought to trial. But the night before his execution, he feigns his death and is smuggled away by his confederates. What is the next recourse? Justice must be served, even though the means be extraordinary. And I believe I am those means. Acting upon your compulsion, I confronted the man of whom you speak face to face. And let me tell you, my friends, if villainy may be given a name, its name is Trevor. The Fall of the Mausoleum Club, written by James Hendry and Ian Brown, starring Martin Jarvis, Richard Pearson, Robin Ellis and Melvin Hayes. Episode 3, Trevor Island. My name is, well, my name is not important, for I am better known as a humorous illustrator for Punch, or the London Charivari, where I draw under the pen name Ziz. After that fearful night in this very room, when you, sir, first made your demands, my spirit was burdened with worry. I would need leave of absence to execute your will. But as an indispensable mainstay of that hilarious publication, how might I persuade my editor to grant it? Enter! Excuse me, sir. Uh, might I have a word with you? Ah, uh, this. I want to have a word with you. I, uh... What is this? It's one of my new cartoons. <laughs> Read it out. Oh, certainly, sir. <clears throat> Mistress to lazy servant who has knocked over one of her best vases during an unwontedly vigorous bout of spring cleaning... Oh, really, Daisy? This is much too careless. Breaking a vase would be sufficiently tiresome, but was it not Wednesday last that you broke another such vase exactly the same as this one? Yes, I don't really think... And the it's... lazy servant replies... Ho, oh, indeed, Mum. Seeing as how I had broke the first, I had assumed that a break in the second would be no grievous loss, seeing as how they would now be a pair. Servant evidently subscribing to Dr Johnson's view that to double a tragedy halves the damage. <laughs> Ziz, where's the picture? Uh, there is no picture. No picture. I'd run out of space. Yes, well, judging by your previous efforts, perhaps it's for the best. I say, sir, I'm in the most dreadful pass. Yes, indeed. I wonder, might I beg a temporary leave of absence from this office? Leave of absence? Certainly not. It's out of the question. Oh, why, sir? Because you were fired 12 seconds ago. Oh. Pausing only to withdraw my life savings of £200, which is a lot of money in these days, I began my manhunt in Bristol, one of Trevor's old haunts. Ah, Bristol. Bristol. Gateway to adventure, romance and... and the Bristol Channel. It was here I discovered that my piratical quarry was abroad once again in the West Indies. 
I need hardly describe my excitement at the prospect of sailing savage seas, sketching exotic flora, and maybe even discovering a new species of servant joke. But how to get there? Yes, gentlemen, I decided to hire a ship. Excuse me, sir. Um, might I have a small glass of spa water? A glass of spa water? Yes, please. I see. Anything else? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. I'd like to charter a ship to the West Indies. Lads, take this gentleman out the back and give him what he's asking for. <laughs> oh, no, no, wait, I've got a better idea. Oh, what's that? Look who's just walked in. Wow! <laughs> Here, here's her. You're not a timid man, are you? Me? Oh, gosh, no. You're not afraid of danger? I should say not. Uh, you, you don't mind living in fear every day, God said ye, sir? Um, no. Well, then, we've got just a ship for you. Oh. Captain White! Oh, hi there, shipmates. Uh, what can I get for you, Captain? The usual. Uh, yes, please, Sidney. Uh, uh, this time, do use a strainer. That's it. <laughs> well, the cup to cheer. Here, cup mine, sir. This uh, gentleman's looking for a ship. Ah, what's it to be? Trip round the lighthouse? Oh, well, no, no. <laughs> it's a bit further than that. Oh, lummy. Not Minehead. Well, no, no. Past Minehead, the West Indies. The West Indies? Well, gracious, I'm not going there. Well, I understood you had a boat. Well, yes, I... Well, then what's wrong with it? Well, nothing's wrong with the boat. It's the water. There's an awful lot of it. The salt plays many heck with my skin complaint. Besides, the place is riddled with pirates. <laughs> Not unlike Bristol. I, I do have 200 guineas at my disposal. Well, are you coming or not? Eh? Look, Slippy, or we're Mr. Ty. Oh, uh, coming. And, uh, gentlemen, I'll see you again. I doubt it very much, sir. Very much indeed. <laughs> Come along. Take no notice of them. They're just big scamps, really. So, Captain White, when do we set sail? Well, let me see. I've just got to assemble the crew, lock up my bike and shoot around the shops, you know, soap, toilet rolls, a few magazines, uh, uh, and then we'll be off. Oh, one moment, Captain White. Where shall I meet you? At the ship. You, you can't miss her. She's down at Broad Quay, the SS Poodle. The SS Poodle, I was soon to discover, was a fine ship, tall and proud. It distinguished itself from the clippers and ketches on the bustling quay by the tallness of its mast, the whiteness of its sail, and its deck swaddled from rail to wrought iron rail with deep pile axminster. Do you like it? With my Aunt Jessie's idea. Oh. She hates the thought of anyone tripping up and hurting themselves. <laughs> anyway, uh, give me a hand with the shopping and we'll pop down and meet the gang. Right. Hello, I'm home. Hello. Oh, you should have told us you were coming. We'd have piped you aboard. Pipe me aboard? What do you think I am? Whipped cream? <laughs> no, just checking. Uh, uh, now, gentlemen, uh, this is Mr. Ziz, the noted humorous illustrator. Uh, hello. <laughs> humorous, eh? <laughs> well, I, I do my best. Well, what do you think of this, eh? Sniff my flower. Hmm? Oh, oh. <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> oh, Kipper is our entertainment officer. Oh, indeed. That's a hanky. Oh, thank you. Now, uh, this is Mr Bannister, the first mate. Hello, mate. You'll excuse me if I don't shake hands. I'm afraid Mr Bannister lost both his arms in an accident. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure he's still a vital member of the crew. Oh, no, completely useless. Oh. Mind you, he does a frightfully good hornpipe. Um, I, I brought you some magazines. Oh, well, uh, One hates to travel without something to read. Uh, here, here we are. Uh, Blackwoods, oh, no, no, no. Young Folks magazine, uh, Reynolds Miscellany. Uh, who, who's for the Strand magazine? Oh, oh me. I love that. No, me. And Punch. Oh, no, it's gone right off. Especially the cartoons. Welsh? Yeah. Shush. <laughs> well, uh, is that it? 
Well, they didn't have the cycling gazette. No, I mean, is that the whole crew? Well, hard to get to the West Indies with four men, one of whom's got no arms. No, that'd be silly. No, I, I, I let Pegs here hire the rest of the crew. How do, sir? Pegs is the ship's dentist. Dentist? Well, I wouldn't cross the Atlantic without someone to see to my impacted premolar, would you? <laughs> Which reminds me, uh, what time do we shove off? We set sail two minutes ago, Captain. Oh, gumdrops. I'm glad somebody's on the ball. It was clear from the start the voyage of the Poodle was to be no ordinary expedition. With a man of Captain White's experience at the helm, adventure was never far away. Scissors! I can't! Quick, somebody, catch it! Don't let it go over the side! And since his navigating skills were quite exceptional, we put into Ilfracombe three times in the first week, he relinquished the helm to somebody with more marine experience, the ship's dentist. So, Master Pegs, how goes it? Oh, not so bad, sir. We're drilling hard for Madeira, then we'll slip through the cavity between the Canaries, making a secure foundation for our bridging work to the Bahamas. So we're making good time? Aye, sir. As sweet as a brush across a set of pearly white incisors, sir. Oh, marvellous. <laughs> I can't wait to sketch the natives. To say nothing of the pistols and sabres. What? Well, you must have heard of Trevor and his band of pirates. Pirates? Never said there'd be pirates so green dentures. Yeah, his gang was wiped out by the revenue men, but their booty never found. Booty, eh? Tell me more. Uh, well, uh, What's that banister? Oh, oh. Someone take that teacup from him. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, the summer say the treasure's still out there waiting to be dug up. Buried treasure, eh? <laughs> well, where is it? It's not worth thinking about. Trevor and his men are all dead, and no one's going to know where it is now. Hmm. Well, yes, I suppose you're right. If they are all dead. Oh! Hey, what are you doing? I'm sorry, Captain. I'm turning this ship around. Pirates, treasure. I'd sooner have ginger fighters. Pegs, I've told you there are no pirates. Captain, Captain, pirate clipper on the starboard bow. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, only joking. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. The orthodontic helmsman, having been mollified with a dozen back issues of punch for his waiting room, we made good progress thereafter. As the days turned to weeks and the weeks turned to fortnights, the skies grew clear and a tropical sun beat down on our tender English necks. The ship became a seaborne furnace. Ooh. Would anyone object if I took off my blazer? Captain! Captain, look at this. Good Lord. A treasure map? Well, no, actually, it's a drawing of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll fall out of my deck chair. You really mustn't. <laughs> I'll say you mustn't. That's about as funny as cannibalism. Well, really, for an entertainment officer, you've got a pretty poor sense of humour. Oh, come on. Only a joke. Let's shake on it. Oh, very well. <laughs> oh, come on. It was only a joy buzzer. Yes, but you kicked me on the knee. Yeah. <laughs> Weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> Why, all the... <laughs> no, no, no. Settle down, everyone. Now, I, I think we're all getting a bit hot and a bit tired. Uh, Kipper, uh, why don't you organise something to goose up morale? Oh, yeah. What a top an idea. And so it was that the very next day, the voyage of the Poodle was enlivened by a grand dental event, at which the ship's dentist gave a virtuoso display of his skills. Heave! Heave! It was a glorious affair. The afterdeck was festooned with bunting, and Bannister had dressed up in his best wooden arms. Forty-two teeth in the bucket! Hooray! That was my best gold filling. Shut up, you're delirious. Thank you, thank you, and now, scaling and polishing, blindfold. Oh! But even this cheery occasion could not dispel the aura of oppression and unrest which enfolded the poodle as she neared the bleached shores of the Carib Isles. My goodness, Mr Ziz, I don't know what's got into them. I caught this one with his boots on the sofa. Oh. Most peculiar. Almost as if someone's been going round stirring them up. <laughs> right, that's enough. And if you do it again, you can beat all the downstairs carpets as well. Oh, no fear, sir. I, I've learned my lesson. Yes, well, time will tell. So, Mr Ziz, 
This is the Caribbean. Well, which bit are you after? Ooh, uh, which bits are there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Ah, <laughs> we make a fine pair. Yes. <laughs> Might I make a suggestion, Captain? <laughs> yes, pigs, far away. Well, if it's sketching desert islands Mr Ziz is after, then I know the very place. Oh. Tom Bowler. Tom Bowler? Aye, it is a small island, but 30 leagues from here. Plenty of sand, plenty of trees. Nobody lives there, not even pirates. <laughs> well, just right for an artistic temperament. Well then, looks like it's Tom Bowler, ahoy! Tom Bowler. How that name stirred my spirit of adventure. And yet, at the same time, with what dark misgivings my stomach churned. If Trevor had truly slipped the noose, might he not have amassed another pirate gang? In which case, what use was our ragtag crew against a hardened criminal army? That night in my cabin, I tossed and turned without rest or repose. Kipper had made me an apple pie bunk. So unable to sleep, I tiptoed my way to the moonlit poop. <sighs> the tropical night is so beautiful. I must fetch my sketchbook and draw the stars. Hold on. Who's there? Oh, Mr. Zez, it's you. I was well nigh feared for my life. Oh, Pegs, what are you doing out so late? Well, I thought I heard something. <laughs> Pirates again, eh, Pegs? <laughs> no, it was just a bad dream. You go on back to your bed. Oh, yes. <laughs> I feel better now that I know you're watching over us. <laughs> so, me. Are you for us or against us? Oh, well, well, I'm for you, Mr. Rowe, sir. Well, I should hope so. Well, you'd have Trevor to answer to. Trevor? Oh, oh never fear, Mr. Rose. I, I, I'm for you. Well, it seemed the afterdeck of the Poodle by night was a regular Regent Circus. Do we not come here, then? In order the better to eavesdrop on my mysterious co-noctambulists, I determined to conceal myself in a nearby apple barrel. Mr. Ziz, what are you doing in that apple barrel? <laughs> well, I, uh, <clears throat> well, it, it's quite simple. Oh, they say there's a rotten one in every batch. Out you come. What? Oh. 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 The tough oh. town spy, eh? I, I, I won't tell anyone. No, nor shall you. You'll be as quiet as the grave. <laughs> <laughs> Pegs! Pegs, uh, quick, fetch the captain, Pegs. Mr. Ziz, what is it? Oh, oh pirates. <laughs> no, Pegs, it's a mutiny. Run for help. Pegs? Pegs, why are you looking at me like that? Pegs? Come on, Mr. Ziz, let's not be so formal. You can call me Trevor. You, Trevor. But, uh... Captain White will have something to say about this. I'm going to fetch him this minute. I wouldn't if I were you. These are loaded. So are these. And so are these. <laughs> and so is the pair sticking in my back. Captain. Oh, dear, another mutiny. You'd think you'll get used to them, but no. Well, what's the worry this time? The food, the pay, the decor? The ship. I'm afraid it's the only one I've got. Aye, and I'm having it. No, but just a minute, this is my ship. I chartered it. And very conveniently, too. There I was, in Bristol, penniless, shipless, and parted from my treasure by 3,000 miles of saltly tears. Then, what do I hear? Someone's going round asking questions about me. A revenue man, most like. So what do I do? I put it about the Trevors in the West Indies, knowing that you'd hire a ship to go after him. Yeah. No sooner have you done that than I offer the good captain the services of both myself and my former shipmates. Yeah. <laughs> hey, presto, a free ride to Tombola. Devilishly brilliant. You know I could kick myself sometimes. I could save you the bother. <laughs> so what's to be done with him, my merry mola? I can dance, Davy Jones, jig. I go from the mizzen. Come um, now, me boys, you're being too hard. We're not without pity. Cast him adrift. Hey, 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 hey. Cast him adrift in an open boat. Yeah. Ah. And cast adrift we were, without food, water, or sketch pad. Captain White, myself 
and the one crew member who had remained loyal to the last, the faithful Bannister. I'm only here because I couldn't hold a gun. I shall pretend I didn't hear that. And in case you get bored, Mr. Revenue Man, here's something to keep you amused. The ship's entertainment officer. Now wait, wait! I was on your side! Ah! Oh! Didn't hurt a bit. Hello, hello? Hello. Here's his pick a card. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gets them every time. Well, here's a prize pickle. No food, no water. Lord knows how long we've been drifting aimlessly like this. I'll make it about ten minutes. Gosh, is that all? Yes, it does seem longer, doesn't it? Yes. I do hate missing breakfast. It throws me out for the rest of the day. Yes. Anyone bring a book? Here, here. This will cheer you up. Sniff my flower. Oh, what are you looking like that for? It's only water. Water? Why didn't you tell us you had some water? Because it would have spoiled a surprise. <laughs> oh, you. No, 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 no. Settle down. We may be going to die, but we mustn't forget our manners. No, no. Now, um, does anyone know any good stories? I know one. It was Christmas Day. A huge goose was roasting in the oven. Brussels sprouts it was. Oh, shut up. All right, all right, all right. Try this one. It's not about food, is it? No, no. It's about these three traders what got iced up in Baffin Bay, right? So they got no food, and they got hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. Oh. Anyway, the three of them decided on a plan, right? So the traders crept up on the other one. I say, I, I think I've heard this story. Oh, have you? Yeah, so have I. Have you heard it, Mr Ziz? Why, yes. I do believe I have. <sighs> well, that's better, isn't it? <gasps> Pardon? <laughs> oh, scissors. What is it? No serviettes. Oh, it's so frustrating. Yes, sir, I do dislike greasy fingers. No, no, I was talking about the island. What? Well, look, there's Tombola. We can see it, but we just can't reach it. Yes, I, I'm afraid without oars, we're like a boat without... without oars. Mm. Sorry, I, I must be raving. <laughs> yeah, oars, oars. Even a couple of bits of wood would do. Yes, a couple of bits... I say, Bannister, <laughs> you have a couple of bits of wood. What? Are you raving now? No, I mean your arms. My arms? Why, you pup, these are my Sunday best. You lay hand on these and I'll... Oh. You're what, Mr. Bannister? Oh, oh, oh all right. Unbuckle them. Oh, yeah, it's a shame we didn't think of this before we, uh... Well, not really. Oh, no. <laughs> Jolly boat in weather <laughs> And an oh, oh, Not a moment too soon, eh? <laughs> How long is it since Trevor set us adrift? Oh, about two hours. So we'll swim, swim together. As we rowed lustily towards Tombola, I devised a plan of campaign. All I had to do was reach the island, kill Trevor, overpower his band of buckos, commandeer their ship and sail it home, perhaps finding the treasure along the way. But it would be a close-run thing. Captain White could feel his rash coming on. Right, here we are. Just in case someone thinks of pinching the boat, we'll chuck away the oars. Oi! Oh, sorry. Now, where do you suppose the pirates are hiding? There's a light coming through those trees. They most probably lit a fire. Right, come on. Now, we'll have to creep up very stealthily and pick them off one by one. So, so whatever happens, we mustn't make a sound. Whoa! What's happened? Captain, are you hurt? Not badly. What a stupid place to leave a hole. Give us a hand up, Bannister. Oh, sorry. Here. Here, up. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, look, I've snapped my favourite bra. Never mind that. 
Somebody might have heard us. Now, please look where you're going. <laughs> See? It's not easy, is it? I struggled out of the hole, and the three of us peered into the encroaching tropical dusk. To our surprise, the entire foreshore was peppered with giant holes and massive mounds of earth, like the burrowings of some freakish mole. They, they haven't got a map. Hmm? What? Yeah, they haven't got a map. They don't know where the treasure is, so they're digging blind. <laughs> As I always say, cheats never prosper. Come on, let's creep up on their camp and find out what's going on. We crept towards the pirate's stockade, avoiding the holes wherever possible. Whoa! Oh, honestly. Look where you're going. As we drew near, the others took up my suggestion that we hide ourselves in the thick undergrowth surrounding the camp. Oi! What are you doing in that undergrowth there? <laughs> well, stop me, it's the revenue man. Come on out with your hands up. Oh, Lord. Oh, dear. <laughs> Line them up. Uh -uh. Don't push. So, this is how you repay my clemency. Well, you won't be so lucky this time. You'll be boiled in oil, then strung up and quartered like buttocks of ham. Oh, oh, but first, pass me my bag, Welsh. We wouldn't want to send you to heaven with bad tea. Oh, oh no. No, we're really for it. Don't panic. I think I've seen the way out of this. Yes? Run like fun! And run we did, hotly followed by the wild-eyed bandits of the main. Thanks to my hygienic upbringing, I quickly outstripped my pursuers and paused for a rest behind the first convenient rock. <sighs> Don't bother to retrieve your breath, Mr Ziz. You won't be needing it again. Trevor, but how did you catch me up? I took a shortcut. Oh, now... Die, tax man. All right. Uh, uh, but first, smell my flower. Hmm? Ah! Oh, my eyes! Ah, salt water. Oh, where are you, you worm? Over here. Uh, where? This way. This way. I can't see him now. Whoa! And down he fell. Down, down onto his twin antique flintlocks, which had once expelled their deadly charge into their master's chest. So, that was the end of Trevor, dental scourge of the high seas, the victim of an unfilled cavity. <laughs> but the treasure? Uh, what about the treasure? Aha, I was just coming to that. The pirates, now rudderless, turned to the one man on the island who had the natural bearing of a leader of men. Now, all right, you chaps. First things first. It's quite obvious there's no treasure here, so we're all going home. Oh, but, but, but before that... You must bury your late friend. Uh, bah! Let him rot where he lies, for all I care. Uh, or be like that, then. Go and wait on the boat. Uh, Mr Ziz and I will be an hour and a bit. So it was left to the two of us to observe the decencies. We dragged the former pirate captain a little way inland, and there prepared his final resting place. Oh. Well, at least the soil's nice and loose. How about that? It seems quite solid just here. Hello? What's this? Ha ha! The Fall of the Mausoleum Club, Episode 3, Trevor Island, was written by Ian Brown and James Hendrick, starring Robin Ellis, Melvin Hayes, Peter Howell, Martin Jarvis, Richard Pearson, Ron Pember, Michael Ripper, William Simons, and Bill Wallace. Music by Max Harris. The producer was Paul Spencer. Music